Hello. I am in Zakros in Eastern Crete. Um, and I've just finished the, um, the E4 in Crete and pretty much the E4 in Greece. Um, and I'm just going to do one of these videos. Is this going to come off? No, it's still working. Um, and I'm just going to do one of these videos um, just about my thoughts on the E4 in Greece, mainly in the Peloponnese and um, and Crete, because um, I actually got buses a lot in northern Greece, um, which I've got. I have reasons for, but I'm not going to go into them now. Um, I'll go into them later, later on at some point. Um, but yeah, so what I'll do is, um, like my last video on Bulgaria, um, I'll talk a bit about general thoughts on, on Greece. Um, and then um, walking in Greece, I mean, um, and then I'll talk about the Peloponnese, the E4 in the Peloponnese, and then the E4 um, in Crete, or the Cretan Way, it's also called here. Um, and I'll put timestamps in the description, so um, you can just kind of find, if you want if you want information on a particular trail, you can just kind of go straight to the bit in the video I talk about it. So... Greece. First of all, as you might imagine, with um, you know, it's a hot country, so it is very hot. I've um, been doing most of my hiking in October, and it has been um, probably in the upper twenties, thirties, low thirties most days. Um, a thing that makes it even even harder compared to like you know Bulgaria. Um, or Romania is that there's not a lot of forest like there is in those countries. It's you know very dry. Um, there's not a whole lot of shade on the trees, um, so it can be just very draining, especially if you've got to do like a few hundred meters climb um, in the midday sun. Um, so yeah, that's that's you know yeah I, I wouldn't want to come here in like summer basically. Um, I think kind of probably spring or autumn is the best kind of time, really. If you want to do anything in Greece, um, another thing is water. Um, usually, like when I was in Spain, you'd find like a water tap or a fountain in every village. You can find water in most villages, but not all villages have um, any sort of water supply, any water source. Um, and I've been through a lot of villages as well where there's a water tap or a fountain there, but it's, you know, switched off, um, which, you know, isn't great. Um, but what I did do is um, whenever I passed a, wo a working water source, I don't know if you can hear that kid outside, some kid, you know, screaming on, I apologise. But yeah, every time I would pass a working water source, I would add it to OpenStreetMap. So if you're gonna be walking here, I mean that's a good place to um, to start. But you know I've marked the water source, but I mean that could be turned off. You know by the time you come to hike it, who knows? But um, but it's better anyway. Um, the other thing is marking. You know, and I'll preface this by saying this might just be because I've been spoiled coming through. Um, you know Hungary and Bulgaria in particular have like excellent way marking. Um, to the point where you can happily walk for hours and not have to check the map if you don't want to. Greece is not like that, I don't find. Um, you know, sometimes you're going over open country, um, you know, and, the, and you'll either have like a dozen goat tracks going in all different directions. Um, and your path is one of them, but there's no mark to tell you which. Um, or you'll just be walking over like open country up to bushwhack, and there might like, be no path at all. Um, and usually that wouldn't be a problem because often like the best path will be kind of marked on rocks and stuff. And and it is in Spain in in Greece for the most part, but they're not easy to see. A lot of them are faded. Um, or just not painted at all, uh, and um, they have a system here 
um, but I haven't really seen anywhere else where they'll have like a metal pole and then there'll be like um, I guess it's probably plastic sign like on the pole almost like a flag and it'll have it'll be like a white a white sign of like a yellow diamond with E4 written on it um, so I mean you should be able to kind of go between these posts um, but they're not always in line of sight of each other you've usually got to walk like five or more minutes from one sign before you even see the next one um, and also the kind of plastic I don't know the sign itself tends to you know be hard to see especially in the glare of the sun and you know they just kind of fade in the sun um, the marks themselves take you know there's no there's no uniformity you know I followed kind of yellow marks yellow and black yellow and white red um, red red lines two red lines just just a, a, a wave of paint on a rock um, there's no uniformity so I mean you're never entirely sure if you're following the right path or not um, having said that you know while I have taken a few wrong turns I haven't got majorly lost um, I think if you've got some experience and you've got you know patience because it is frustrating um, you're not going to go too wrong um, what I would recommend as well is um, um, you know map and compass because you on these sections you'll either be walking on a bearing or walking you know according to a line on a GPS so I would recommend you know one or both of those things um, so yeah um, Accommodation. Accommodation is, is very, um, you know, it's pretty much everywhere. Um, most villages, or a lot of, I won't say most, but many villages will have at least, you know, a guest house in the, in the, in the village. But I don't really find there's a lot of choice on, like, booking.com, which I was using, or even Airbnb. Um, not for the entire route. So, um, so I'm not sure about accommodation. Um, <laughs> I would recommend, um, and I'll, I'll talk about this after, um, but finding like a guidebook, especially on the Crete section. Um, there is a guidebook. In fact, I'll talk about guidebooks when I talk about the trails themselves. But I would recommend, you know, the guidebook should hopefully give you clues for, you know, accommodation. Or you know, actually plan it in advance. Unlike you know me, I just you know wing it basically. Um, there are also refuges, mountain huts, um, in places, but outside of Mount Olympus, they're not going to be open unless you pre-book, and um, they probably won't open for like less than I don't know two people. I'm guessing. I don't think they would open if you're just like a solo hiker. Um, I mean, there's plenty of information online about the particular refuges and who to ring to kind of book and have them open. Um, and there's not always water at the refuges either, which, you know, there usually is at every other refuge I've stepped at in other countries. Um, so, you know, that's something to bear in mind. Um, you know, it wasn't a big deal for me because I was inside my tent and, you know, I camped more than anything in... Um, in well, everywhere basically um, and I only really failed at camping once um, a couple of other times I did but that was you know, due to my own you know silliness really um, but it was only once um, descending into Andras I think it's called um, just um, a couple of days from the east coast where um, the trail goes over like a big hill with kind of um, I guess a wind farm on top and I was planning to camp up there, but when I got there, it was just like rocks everywhere. And, um, you know, it was just, it wasn't going to work. So, um, but there was a guest house in Handras, which I stopped at. Um, but, yeah, and that was like last minute thing turned up in the village and asked about, but it, we opened up the guest, the, yeah, the guest house for me. It was all right. Um, yeah. Yeah, going back, I said this with marking, but um, 
many of like the paths um I found to be awkward you know the um you know at, at best you know there'll be like a, a a proper path to walk on but it might be kind of steep loose loose stones and stuff so, so especially if you know it is steep it's going to be you know awkward um and I found myself a lot of the time like hoping for a you know a farm track or something to walk on um which you know isn't great so um on to the Peloponnese um, Peloponnese is like the southern, southern bit of mainland Greece, um, separated by, um, it's like Corinth, I think it's Isthmus of Corinth, is it, something like that. Um, but anyway, you look at a map and you'll be able to tell. Um, the first day in the Peloponnese, well first of all I think the Peloponnese is you know, quite well marked. Um, there's like website, a couple of websites you can find like route route information on which is helpful um, and there's also a guidebook that um, I'll put a link in the description to uh, for the website of it's only published in German though so I didn't get it which I kind of wish I had but you know I, I can't vouch for the accuracy of the information or how much information it contains but, um, but I'll put a link anyway um, yeah it's fairly well marked it's um you know the first day is um is on a train track believe it or not and um but it's not like a major line it's, it's basically like a single track thing that goes up to a mountain village and you like just walk up it basically um i think i was on it for um i think i was on it for like seven hours or something um and in that time, three trains passed me by. Um, oh, yours! But you can find um, there's a website um, with like a timetable of the trains when they leave each station, um, and then from that you can kind of estimate what kind of time it'll be passing you by. Um, one thing to bear into mind is the track goes over quite a lot of you know bridges and through tunnels. Which you know they're not massively long, but um, still, like you know, when when you think there might be a train coming, you know, you should be aware of it. Um, but I mean, it's quite safe. I think there were quite a few other people on there um, when I was there, um, and obviously it's the official route, and it's it's talked about online. People who hike it, I think a lot of people tend to get the train up and then walk back down to the sea. Um, but it was quite a fun day, quite unusual. I've not walked along a train line before. As part of a long distance hike, um, yeah. One cool thing I saw on on the Peloponnese section on the first few days was um, there's a guest house in in Darris, um, and it sponsored the trail, um, which I don't know the particulars of like whatever deal they have, but I'm guessing they've given like whoever maintains the trail or marks the trail, you know, money, and in return they've got you know signposts up along the trail advertising themselves. Um, which I thought was quite a good idea. Um, it's um, you know because I know a lot of a lot of times you know you can be out in the, out in the sticks and especially if the weather's bad. You know, sometimes it's nice to kind of know oh yeah there's a there's a hotel you know I can stay at next night or whatever and it's got like contact details on there. Um, it's a bit out of my price range at fifty euros a night, but for for some people you know it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, um, another thing, um, there's quite a few steep climbs up and down, out of like in and out of valleys, but the trail doesn't go over any big peaks or anything. Um, it's not alpine. Um, I think the closest it comes to um, you know, a peak is um, there's a mountain called Taigetos, Taigetos, in the southern Peloponnese. I think it's the highest mountain on the Peloponnese, and. Um, And um, yeah, it kind of the trail goes to a refuge a few hundred meters below the mountain. Um, the refuge was closed while I was there, of course. But I mean, it is possible to, you know, go up to the summit and then come back down, and that's like a day. Um, I didn't because I just wanted to make progress, um, and I just couldn't be bothered. I was lazy. Um, but 
but yeah, that's probably the highest, not necessarily the highest it goes, but the, high, the closest you come to kind of going over a peak or doing anything that's, you know, alpine. It's, you know, relatively low level the rest of the time. Not that you're not going up and doing, having a lot of ascent and descent, but, you know, nothing, nothing major. Um, navigation. I used, um, throughout the rest of this trip, on every other country I've been through on the E4, um, I've used OpenStreetMap because I found it to be, you know, the trail is you know, entirely mapped on it. Um, it's generally good. Obviously, it's not been my sole, my sole navigation tool, but I've been using it more and more alongside, you know, paper maps and stuff. Um, so when I started on the Peloponnese, I didn't have paper maps. Um, I, I, I thought I would be able to buy them along the way, but I couldn't see any in any shops. Um, so I thought, oh, open street map would be okay, but it's not, because there's lots of gaps in the mapped route on OSM. Um, not just in the in the way that the route itself is um, is kind of marked, but also like the paths and the tracks it uses on always on the on the route itself on the map. Um, so I wish I'd kind of invested in some proper maps um, or something. Um, or if um, I didn't look online, but if there's a kind of an actual GPX track that you can download for it. I would um, I'd recommend doing that. Um, just doing anything that's not just relying on OpenStreetMap, which you know it's my it's my fault, it's my error at the end of the day. Um, you should always have like more than one means of navigation. But yeah, I think that's um, I think that's about it for Peloponnese. So now I'll talk about Crete, the E4 on Crete. Um, there's also it's also called the Cretan Way, um, which is, um, I think it was a route that was started by an Italian guy who um, has written a book about it. Um, and he's also, he's got a website advertising the book and the route, um, but he also gives GPX tracks for the entire route um, away for free on his website. Um, so I'll put that in the description. Um, I should say again, like the Peloponnese, I wish I'd picked up a guidebook for the uh, for the Crete section because um, like I'll talk about before it's it's not always the easiest route to follow um, and just having a bit of a bit a bit more information on you know what to expect from uh, you know the next path I'm going to would, would have been great um, as well as info on accommodation um, yeah so again what I did was um, I used OpenStreetMap still uh, as my main source. It's mapped a lot better than the Peloponnese. There's a couple of gaps, but I mean it's nothing. It's nothing like you've got on the Peloponnese section. They also had um, three maps, which are these here. I'm not sure if you can see that. They're um, one centimeter to I think it's probably a thousand meters um, maps, and there's three of them which cover. The Crete section, the entirety of Crete. Um, they have the E4 route mapped, but you know it's not it's not enough detail. I would I would advise getting you know at least one to five hundred meters, one centimeter to five hundred meter mapping. Um, maybe even better than that. You know I got the free these maps because you know it's cheaper to buy free maps than it is you know twice that many. Um, but. While the route's on there and it's good for an overview, uh, I'd use them. I could, I would always use them as a backup if I had to. But you know, the details just not, just just not there. You need better, more detail. Um, so yeah, what I'd advise is um, going back to the GPX files that the Italian guy's got on his website. I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. <laughs> um, the GPX files he sends you like a big kind of. Um, it's like a zip file with like dozens of these files in and they cover the entire route but it also has um, variants on um, which is quite good because then if you want to take like a higher route you've got it on your phone or your GPS device um, and they're you know they're free he gives them away for free it's kind of them so um, like I say I'll put a link in the description but I'd advise taking, taking that at least 
Um, yeah. And I got to Crete, the actual E4 route ends in Giffio at the bottom of the Peloponnese, and then you're supposed to get a ferry across to Kissimmee. But when I was um, online before, a friend told me actually, and um, it seems that in the last year there's no information on ferries anymore of when they leave Giffio. Um, and a lot of people were online saying there's no ferries. So um, so I instead made the decision to, when I got to Giffio, get the bus from Giffio to Athens and then the ferry from Athens. Which didn't bother me because it was always my plan to go to Athens, but I was going to do it before going to the Peloponnese. Like when I reached the bottom of northern Greece, go to Athens and then go to the Peloponnese. Um, so I just switched my plans around a bit. But when I got into Giffio, um, I did see a like a ferry company on the travel company um, on the on the harbour front with signs outside saying like ferries to Kissimmee. So I'm not sure. I should have gone in and asked really, but um, I'm not sure if um, that's you know an old an old old signage or if like there are still ferries but they're just not you know advertised online. Um, I know that's not overly helpful, but um, you know it's it's what I saw. Um, yeah, but then from Kissimmee, um, I think the route was planned with the ferries in mind because out of Kissimmee, it was like a 30, 35 mile road walk. It's like two day road walk until you reach like the south coast and like a proper trail. Um, you know, I just I'd had enough of road walking by then to be honest. So um, I actually caught the bus to um, a little village called Vati, um, which I was like five miles before. It, before the actual trail um, I got a bus to there but the problem was um, there's only one bus a day and well, it's a school bus it like, leaves at quarter past two in the afternoon I think it was um, and so it meant like a late start really um, but um, you know, depends what you want to do if you want to do like a two day road walk um, uphill as well I mean i I just didn't want to, I couldn't face the walking on roads anymore, to be honest. Um, but, um, but yeah, so that, that's the bus to Vati. Um, but once you're on the south coast, you, you'll see a lot of people um, and a lot of accommodation. Um, a lot of people seem to, you know, walk that section um, from like village to village, and there's plenty of, you know, you walk into these villages and you'll see signs like rooms for rent and stuff like that. Um, it's um, it's very nice, and it's yeah it's the most popular um, area of Crete on the E4 for hikers I think. Um, and there's lots of you know ancient cities, you know, archaeological sites along the way. Um, some of them are a bit like off trail, um, but it's still interesting. Um, I suppose that's Greece for you. You know you've got ancient Greek, you've got Minoan settlements. There's um, you know, Ottoman forts and stuff on hilltops, so it's quite interesting. There's a lot of you know history on this island, um, and there's also like a Venetian influence. Before I came here, I didn't even know Crete was like a Venetian um, colony, I guess. Um, so it's interesting. Um, like I said before, there's um, on the Cretan Way GPX files. There's like variants. And one of these variants is the White Mountains, which I think is an official E4 variant as well. Um, the White Mountains are about 2,400 metres high. Um, and the trail kind of goes through and there's some, like, some refuges there, which um, are probably closed unless you um, like reserve them in advance. Reserve, um, yeah, reserve. Um, I didn't go through the White Mountains. I stayed on the coast. That was just because... You know, I've been through a lot of mountains in the last few months and fancied walking along a coastal path for a bit of a change, which I don't regret because, um, you know, it just, feel, it just feels right to come to an island and walk along the coast for a bit. Um, so, yeah, it was nice. The only good thing about the south coast is there's a couple of um, free campgrounds right by the beach. There's one in, I saw in uh, Sugia. And then again in I think the next village over Agia Romuli, um, the one in Agia Romuli even had a little 
it was only small but it had like a little shower and toilet block which was kind of really nice it was very clean and and you know it was free it was really nice really nice place to spend the night um yeah you move when you move inland um you'll you'll see a lot less people um i met a few other hikers um inland and they were like in the on creek for like 10 days or something and were hiking as much of the trail in that 10 days as they could um the middle section though i didn't see a lot of people it was mainly you know um in the eastern and western parts of the island um there's also a really bad bushwhack um just east of astraki um there was actually two routes marked and one went um you know it's through a canyon basically um which i started to take because it looked like the better route and it was okay for the first you know couple of miles but then the marking just disappeared and um, it was just a bushwhack. Um, so this was like at six o'clock in the evening I was starting this bushwhack and I only had like an hour or so of daylight left So um, and he still needed to camp as well. So I kind of went back to the start of the gorge and then I camped. And then the next day there's a, there's like a, a variant which is on the, on the GPX files um, that goes up to, goes like, swings around north of the gorge, joins the road and then kind of links back to the trail further east, which is what I took. Um, so yeah, should be, be aware of that. Don't wander into that gorge late at night thinking you'll be able to find a place to pitch a tent or anything. Um, the other thing I like about Crete is there's lots of little churches in the middle of nowhere, like everywhere. Um, and some of these you approach and they're kind of smooth kind of plaster walls on the outside but when but they're really like just um inside it's like a 15th century church where it's been like restored but a lot of them like the the wall paintings the frescoes are still like original but like very decayed because they're like hundreds of years old um so it's really really cool sometimes to go into these like really old churches that you're not you know, expect too much when you look at it from the outside because it just looks like a modern building. But when you go in, it's like, yeah, it's cool. And like I say, you find them everywhere. And the other good thing about those churches on Crete is a lot of them have a, a water tap outside. Not all of them, but, you know, many of them. Um, again, I'm not sure if I said this when I was talking about Peloponnese or just generally, but every working water source I've come across I've added it to OpenStreetMap so it's a good place to start if you need water um, yeah I think that's that's it for my notes I think so yeah um, there's probably things I've forgotten to say uh, so if you've got any questions feel free to you know, leave a comment or whatever and I'll answer you as soon as I can um, so yeah I'm gonna chill out now for the next couple of days and I'm going to fly out to Cyprus to hike the last bit of last like 300 miles of the E4 on Cyprus um, so yeah I've got another month I think on the road and then I'm done so yeah I'll check you guys later out you know, that's really that's, that's the most awkward ending to a video I think ever um, yeah what I meant to say was um, I'll check you guys out later or something like that.